Hi, I'm Dr. Donald Lehman, Professor of Nutrition at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I've spent over 30 years doing research to understand protein and amino acid requirements. My research is focused on optimizing muscle health for physical performance, but also for management of obesity and type 2 diabetes and for healthy aging. Protein remains perhaps the most popular and yet most controversial of all nutrients. Your protein choices determine a lot about what you eat and ultimately how you maintain your muscle health. Critical questions include, is your diet high in protein or low in protein? Is your diet animal-based or plant-based? Is your diet high carbohydrate or low carbohydrate? These decisions define your food choices your meal patterns, and ultimately your health. Dietary choices about protein need to reflect many factors ranging from your personal preferences to biological needs. We know that protein needs relate to body weight and more specifically lean body mass, but our optimum protein requirement is also affected by age, physical activity, and specific food choices. As we get older, our efficiency of protein utilization decreases. It's important to understand that every day our body needs to make more than 250 grams of new proteins to repair and replace existing proteins. Many of these proteins, such as the liver proteins, must be replaced every one or two hours. Our entire GI tract is replaced every three days, while proteins in our muscles must be replaced every one or two months. This replacement process is called protein turnover. And as we get older, our muscles become more and more dependent on the specific amount of protein at each meal to maintain healthy protein turnover. The net result at the same body weight and level of physical activity, a 65 year old requires more total protein than a 25 year old. To fully understand our protein needs, we must understand the four concepts of protein quantity, quality, bioavailability, and distribution. First, let's tackle quantity. We know that 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram body weight is the RDA, the recommended dietary allowance, defined as the minimum amount of protein required to prevent a deficiency but the RDA should never be confused with the daily requirement or the optimum amount of protein to maintain muscle health and body composition. Research from the past 15 years has established that the optimum protein intake for adults should be at least in the range of 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kg. That's approximately double the minimum RDA. Currently, most Americans consume protein around 0.9 to 1.0 gram per kg. That's above the minimum RDA, but well below the optimum level for muscle health. Quantity is a concept relatively easy to understand, but quality and bioavailability are more complex. These concepts are becoming more important with the discussion about plant-based proteins. To correctly understand protein needs, it's first important to recognize that protein is simply a food. We don't really need protein. What we need are the nine essential amino acids contained within the protein. We have specific dietary requirements for each of these nine essential amino acids. Proteins derived from animal foods, such as dairy, eggs, meats, and fish, all contain precisely the correct balance of these nine essential amino acids for humans. While plant proteins contain a mixture of amino acids correctly balanced for plants. Humans need to build body proteins from muscles and liver and kidney and the brain, while plants build proteins for leaves and stems and roots. They're simply not the same. Further, many of the 
proteins contained in plants are bound to plant fibers, which humans can't digest. Hence, many plant proteins have low bioavailability. Protein quality becomes critical, especially for athletes or individuals trying to lose weight to maximize muscle performance and body composition while also using the least amount of calories. Because plant proteins have low bioavailability, ruminant animals such as cattle, sheep, and goats play an essential role in our global food system. The ruminant digestive system of cattle allows the animal to fully digest and break down the plant fibers and capture all of the protein and amino acid bound up within the plants. Cattle, for example, are considered upcyclers of protein quality. For every 60 grams of poor quality plant proteins in grasses and forages and corn consumed by cattle, they produce 100 grams of high quality protein in meat and milk. Cattle increase the nutrient density and reduce the calories that humans need to consume to obtain the necessary essential amino acids. The fourth factor is meal distribution. As we get older, our ability to maintain protein turnover in muscles decreases. Research has discovered that routine resistance exercise and optimizing protein at each meal can enhance protein turnover and blunt the age-related decline in muscle strength and mass. In children, small protein meals like 10 or 15 grams are adequate to maintain healthy growth. But in adults, meal size needs to be at least 30 grams to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Small protein meals can serve to maintain organ tissues like the liver or heart, but skeletal muscle requires a much larger supply of essential amino acids. Hence, the quality of the protein is also important. A high quality protein like milk, or specifically whey protein, can stimulate muscle protein synthesis with only 25 grams at a meal. While plant-based proteins like soy or wheat may require 35 grams or 40 grams to get the same effects in muscle. When comparing plant and animal proteins, either source of protein can be effective, but it always requires more total protein and more total calories to maintain muscle health with a plant-based diet. So without question, protein remains perhaps the most complex and controversial of all nutrients. Vegans, vegetarians, carnivores, flexitarians, omnivores, and even Keto followers all have their opinions and bias. However, the science is clear. Protein is one of the most critical food decisions for long-term health, and the minimum RDA is simply not adequate target for most adults. <laughs>